Almost got it. Almost got it. No, no. Oh, dang it. I lost again. You know, sometimes I see people online speculating as to why is it that certain YouTubers and streamers are bad at video games? You'd figure that if our job is playing stuff 80 or 100 hours every single week, we'd be the absolute best of the best. But that's not necessarily the case. Today I wanted to try and actually reply to that, and actually try and answer the question of how the heck that there can be so many streamers and YouTubers that downright suck at video games. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and I really want to try and dig into this topic because I personally find it so fascinating. Now I am going to be mentioning some people specifically in this video, but please don't think that I'm trying to beat them up. I'm actually going to be defending some people, but let's start off by actually digging into Angry Joe. Now obviously this is a YouTuber with millions of subscribers who pulls down some absolutely ridiculous numbers and he's been doing this for years and years and years. But if you really sit down and see his gameplay, just the raw stuff of him trying to get into fights and tackle bosses, you'll notice that Joe isn't exactly great. He's actually got some pretty low skill. People have even been taking some screenshots of him playing Devil May Cry and managing to beat levels with a D rating, which is almost impossible. But I think that this comes down to something very, very different. It's not necessarily that he's bad at the game, so much as it is that he lacks focus. This is something that I think sort of plagues the entire YouTube area, which is that everybody is just bombarded by video games. There's so much cool stuff to play that you end up not being really the master of any one of them. Now, I just want to try and make an analysis real quick, which is that I've read some raw numbers that speculate that the average hardcore gamer buys between 5 games and 10 games every single year. Now this sounds like a small number, but it's really not. I mean that basically means that on average, if you look at the higher estimates, they're buying a brand new game every 45 days. That means you have over a month to completely do every side quest, beat it on multiple difficulties, and really see all the ins and outs of these ludicrous experiences. Well, try and think if you were trying to do that much on a much grander scale. So the average person is probably playing a bunch of these games and replaying a bunch of stuff. That equals thousands of hours a year spent with a controller in your hand. Well, think about YouTubers. The average YouTuber or content creator or streamer plays about 50 games a year. Now, of course, they're not going to be actually beating all 50 of these games, but they're certainly going to be trying to indulge them, engage them, playing them. Especially streamers, a lot of times these people end up trying to just play a game for like 15 hours in a marathon stream, put it down, and never pick it up again. And I think that what this does is it creates a lack of focus. Because you never really get a chance to center yourself on a particular genre or a particular skill set, you end up never really being that great at it. It's just something that kind of happens. Now let me just give you a random example of myself. Back in the day, I was absolutely obsessed with Left 4 Dead. I actually got to every single achievement in this. Trying to do that though did take hundreds and hundreds of hours, playing co-op, going online, trying to actually beat every single mission without being hit. Did it take an exorbitant amount of time? Yes. But because of it, I am now still an absolute master of any of these survival first person shooters. It's just so ingrained in me this skill set of dodge and destroy. And you know what? I think that a lot of YouTubers and streamers end up having the issue of they just play so much stuff that they never really build up that baseline skill set. They never manage to develop themselves more as a gamer. This is part of the reason that there are certain YouTubers out there who absolutely decimate me because they have managed to take the time to develop these skills. Like just as a random shot in the dark, freaking RGT85. This guy is admittedly a pro at Street Fighter, and I consider myself pretty dang decent at fighting games, and I really have fun reviewing them, but this dude, holy heck. I mean, he can destroy me all day long, and I bet he could even flawless me just because he spent so much more time learning how the moves work, what combos are, and exactly how a special's range is functioning to make it where an average player or even a decent player just can't hold a candle to them. Well, a lot of streamers, I think that there's the issue of they're constantly trying to pivot game to game, genre to genre, and they never manage to establish themselves mentally. I really feel like video games, it feels a lot like weightlifting or trying to be a professional debater. 
In order to get good at it, you need to do it for tons and tons of time first in order to do it wrong. Being incorrect for a long period of time ends up developing that skill. I mean, if you're trying to lift muscles all day long or, or if you're trying to lift weights, you need to try and learn what you're doing, read books, figure out the proper foods to eat, and sometimes even hurt yourself in the gym in order to get good at it. If you're trying to be a debater, honestly, sometimes you need to go up on stage and get completely embarrassed in order to figure out what you're you're doing wrong and how you can improve. Well, I definitely think that there's definitely a certain amount of overlap to that and trying to be a professional gamer or streamer. Some people, though, they also just don't care about being good. I mean, let's just look at somebody that I personally don't care for, which is DSP Gaming. This guy is probably one of the worst gamers I've ever seen in my life. He screams at stuff, he's really, really dumb sometimes, uh, just in his general ability, like one time he did a playthrough of Metal Gear Solid 2 and he got spotted by basically every single guard and every time he got seen by a guard he just screamed stupid game and throw down the controller. That's a person who doesn't want to learn. That's a person who doesn't care about improving. That is a person who, by appearances, doesn't even want skill because he doesn't know what he'd do with it. So I think what you really need to do is basically take a step back and realize that a lot of YouTubers probably have the idea that they're good at a game, but just never managed to establish themselves in it. And I'll be honest, a lot of YouTubers pride other abilities more so than just being good at games. Like, just to go back to Angry Joe, Angry Joe is a very good editor, and I'd definitely say a pretty darn good writer. This guy manages to write 30 and 40 minute reviews that are just completely in depth covering every single aspect of it and he never once repeats a point. That takes an enormous amount of time and I definitely think he probably spends more hours honing his craft than just live streaming games. He wants to make sure that he's doing the best that he can at what he thinks is the more important aspects of his life. Some of us though, like you and me, we care about being good. We are trying to improve ourselves because we think that gaming is important. We think that skill is something that you need to develop. Now, like recently, I've been playing a bunch of Tetris 99, and I will flat out tell you, I suck at this. It is so freaking fun, and I'm totally addicted to it, but for some reason, I don't actually have the mental capacity to be great at puzzle games. I'll fully admit that. I'm not ashamed to say that while I am good at RPGs, and I'm good at analytical functioning mentally, when it comes to just trying to do basically play a block breaker to high skill level, I can't. And I actually think that that makes them more fun. Sucking at them is incredibly enjoyable to me because I can feel myself slowly beginning to grasp the mechanics. Slowly getting better is the joy to me. Personally, as a reviewer, I also think that this is important. I think being able to really revel in the ability to get better, to focus on your weaknesses and slowly try and grow your skill base is a real treat. It's honestly, to me, the biggest reward of being a YouTuber is the fact that I get to constantly play different stuff and see new challenges and honestly play things that I never thought I'd like. I fall in love with so many new series simply because I have a random thing thrown in my lap and I have to try and be the best at it and sometimes I discover a natural aptitude to it. It's just fun. So basically what I'm saying is, if you see a YouTuber who's really, really bad at games and you want to call them out, feel free. You can be like, hey man, you suck. But realize that maybe being the best at games isn't as important to them as it is to you. Now, also, I just want to say, there are a lot of streamers out there who got famous because they're super, super ultra skilled. I know a lot of people like to beat up on him, but Ninja, that streamer definitely blew up because he was the world world's best Fortnite player. This dude would sometimes get 20, 30 kills in a match, and nobody else in the world was really doing that at the time. These people rise to the top, but I also think that the streamers who only focus on skill also end up tumbling down because they don't have that really cool charm and personality to back it up. Being able to make it online is a combination of both. Being good, being skilled, and also, of course, just trying to be charming on camera, which I can't do because I'm a goofy loser, but I'm so happy happy that you watched this video, and I hope this answered your question. But what do you think? How do you feel about YouTubers that aren't exactly good at games, or maybe even journalists? What do you think about those IGN employees and Kotaku people who seem like they don't even know which way to hold a controller? They're definitely, like, doing reviews like this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. 
Oh man, I feel like DSP Gaming is going to totally block me on Twitter. Oh well, what are you going to do? Do it, Dark Side Phil! <laughs> Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.